I have. <laughs> hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to Stock Markets with Bruce. I'm your buddy, Uncle Bruce, here, um, where I try to explain to all of you in plain English what's going on in the market. Welcome to the show for Wednesday, May the 3rd, 2023. Another fun day. Um, we have uh, a lot going on here, as the the usual. Well. Um, we are looking at... Uh, the market's slightly higher this morning, about a fifth of a point, quarter of a point, nothing much. The Dow's up 63 points in pre-market. We have S&P up 11, and we've got uh, NASDAQ up 37, 37 points. The oil uh, price in Texas and uh, Brent oil in Europe, those two are taking a hit. We have oil in Texas at $69.76. <clears throat> this is a break. Uh, we were we were in the seventy five range a couple of days ago. Uh, we're now at sixty nine. We might uh, we may have even touched sixty eight dollars earlier this morning already. Um, there is a realization happening. Uh, what we call in the real world uh, versus the fantasy land world that some live in. Um, the oil shills are in the fantasy land and are being paid to promote oil at all costs. They were trying to convince the world that the price of crude would go to 120 a barrel because the summer driving season was going to be unbelievable. The U.S. economy was doing great. China's coming back on. Oh, sing kumbaya by the campfire, folks. It's going to be fabulous. Um, and then the realization kicked in that, oh, gee whiz, uh, there's all this oil everywhere. Every OPEC uh, country is cheating except maybe Saudi Arabia. Maybe they're cheating too. Oil from Russia is anywhere you want it. Uh, how much would you like? Um, and the Americans are going, uh, we're, we're kind of going into a recession. Uh, China is going, uh, we're not booming like we thought we'd be booming. I mean, the pandemic is over, but we're, we're not, uh, it's just not happening like we thought it was going to happen. And all of a sudden, there's a glut of oil everywhere well i have been saying this for how long have i been saying there's an oil glut let me think a minute i started this channel in 2021 forever uh yes we have had an oil glut forever and there will be one forever there will be one forever because when oil reaches 75 80 bucks a barrel everybody who pulls oil out of the ground makes money it's just that simple when you have very high prices for a commodity that you can relatively easily sell, everybody produces the commodity. It, it's kind of a funny thing. Countries with dictators who have to pay bribes to their colonels and generals and their judges and their jailers and their cops and their secret police and all of their affiliate friends, they need bribe money. The best place to get bribe money is to steal the commodity from the people of the country that live there sell this stuff on the open market for those U.S. dollaros and bribe everybody to keep you and your family in power. It's a pretty simple playbook. It's been around forever, and it will continue that way. And so eventually you have too much oil sloshing around, especially if countries like Canada, the U.S., and Europe decide, you know, it might not be a bad idea to seriously consider producing energy from solar panels or from wind farms or uh, nuclear or anything but oil. Uh, maybe we could wean ourselves off of this stuff little by little over the decades and not use as much on a per person basis. Problem is, if there are more people, we'll use more of this stuff. Well, China has just been surpassed by India on the population index. It's not because the Indian people are having more children per person. No, it's that the Chinese are having fewer babies per person because of that one child rule that was enacted 20, 30 years ago. It's finally catching up to the Chinese. That means the Chinese economy isn't going to grow as much as it did before. The China population is going to decrease over the next 20 years by 50 million people, 80 million people. As we age out, we don't get replaced. We know this game in North America. We know this game in Europe. We know this game in Japan. After the Second World War, we had the baby boom back in the 40s and the 50s. I'm born in 55, but I didn't have six kids with my wife, and all of my pals didn't have five and six kids with their wives and husbands. 
We had one, we had two, maybe three. North America is aging out and now China is going to age out and its population is going to decrease just naturally. Oil demand will drop naturally now for the next 30 years up into China. So it has to rise somewhere else for the oil boys to be able to convince the planet that there's going to really be a shortage of oil. There has to be either a cutoff of supply, there has to be an interruption of flow, or there's going to have to be a major population and economic boom somewhere to really make the world want to buy a bunch of oil. And right now, I don't see that. Show me where I'm wrong, and I'll admit I'm wrong, but I don't see it. Anyway, oil, 69.60, and that's still too high by 15 bucks a barrel. 55 bucks a barrel is where we should be right now. And you should be paying in America 220 a gallon, 170 a gallon to three bucks a gallon, depending where you live. But uh, you're not yet. Uh, and don't worry, the government will step in, uh, especially in Canada and elsewhere. When prices start to slump at the retail level, the government will slip in new taxes to keep the price up and uh, keep us using less. Okay, that's just my little rant. Uh, how you doing, everybody? Um, SoFi shares. Let's talk SoFi, okay? We're at 496 a share right now. The average consensus of analysts that are following and recommending SoFi shares, their target price, the average, 850. The average consensus of where this stock should be trading at is eight dollars and fifty cents we are sitting at 49 495.5 cents a share in the pre-market right now because there's a game going on that we has been around forever called sell now ask questions later get out and then find out why you got out and see if it was a good move or not and we've had in the case of sofi and a zillion other banks out there one direction in the last two weeks for bank stocks lower uh everyone is getting out of banks and it doesn't matter who you are what you say money you make it doesn't matter people have been selling out bank stocks and the thinking is well i don't want to be a shareholder of first republic what if the banks i have are part of first the public same problem those guys had what about silicon valley i didn't want to have don't have that kind of a bank <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to sell out and I'll look around and get back in when it's safe to do so. Well, SoFi comes out on Monday with their financials, which are fantastic. They're absolutely beautiful. 46 percent increase in revenues. Losses down to 30 million from 110 million. This new public company is on fire growing. They're about to become profitable, growing their memberships by 30 something percent. I mean, it's great, 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 great. What does the market do? Sell it. Let's get out. Let's just get out. Let's just get out. Uh, because the same day that good old SoFi tells us how well they're doing, JP Morgan brags to the market, we just bought First Republic from the FDIC, which seized the bank over the weekend. Um, aren't we great with our shareholders? The number one bank in America now is larger again. With the help of the U.S. taxpayer or FDIC-insured uh, entity, to become a larger outfit and grab the cream of the bank and be guaranteed against losses. It's a wonderful deal. Every other bank out there is suspect that well, if you're not if you're not uh, J.P. Morgan, then you can't be any good. And so SoFi goes from six dollars and ninety cents in the pre-market Monday morning, all the way to right now four ninety five, four seventy two during the day yesterday is where we touch base at. Here's what's going on though. Here's the problem. I have bad news for those folks out there who think that SoFi is going to go a lot lower. While it is possible that SoFi could still drop. It might be very unlikely that that could be the case. And the reason I say so is a couple of things. We traded, um, I believe, 150 million shares two days ago, Monday. Yesterday, 115 million shares. Doesn't sound like a lot less, but that is significant. It wasn't more trading to bring the stock into the fours. It was less trading to bring it to the fours. My hunch is this morning, 
there is no selling left. The only selling that could come in now would be short sellers building their short positions. It's the only the only place of, of additional selling. Um, and I have a suspicion what's been going on since uh, last week, early a week ago, maybe 10 days ago, as the stock tried again and again and again to break six bucks a share, it couldn't do it, couldn't do it. Get, it would go to 604, 603, back to 565, go up to 608, 600, back to 475 or 575. Couldn't break six bucks day in and day out and day in and day out until last Friday. And then on Monday, it touched 690 in the pre market. There were shorters shorting this stock every time it got to the six range. We could just sense it here. We talked about it that around 595 to 605, all kinds of stock available to you to be bought. You can buy all you want because short sellers were offering millions of shares. And in the pre market or post market Friday night and the pre market Monday morning before the announcement came out of earnings and before we opened for trading, many, many more shares were made available between 625, 640, 650, 670, 690, all the way up. There were shorter shorting and shorting and shorting and shorting. And when we opened for trading on Monday, boom, 150 million changed hands on Monday. And we backed off all the way down to the low fives yesterday into the high fours. And those who shorted the stock at 575 to 675, they all bought back their stock. Most of them pretty well bought back. The problem now is that during the day, Monday and Tuesday, when the stock began to slump on Monday, a lot of additional short sellers came into the party to join in. And they started shorting at $6.25, $6, $5.90, seventy. And then yesterday, they joined into the party all the way down to four seventy two. dollars We have the reverse of a run up with respect to this rundown. We have got a ton of amateur short sellers who are sitting on a ton of stock that they are short in SoFi right now. And I suspect that their average is between 470 and about 550 a share. And these are the folks that are going to get their butts handed to them sometime today, tomorrow, next week. They're going to get routed out. And I suspect this oversold stock and the oversold banking sector as a whole is going to receive uh, some bids. There are going to be some opportunists going, hey, I think we can catch a bunch of these short, short term shorters. These guys aren't short forever. They want to be short for like a week, a couple of days. We're going to catch these guys with their pants down. And that could well happen at any moment. The only caveat, the only glitch was we have to wait for you know who to have his press conference to say you know what about the quarter point interest rate we're going to get rise today through the fed you know who i'm talking about mr powell has to have his little show and we have to allow the market to digest it what is the market going to hear from mr powell I think the same thing they've been hearing from Mr. Powell now for six months, that we've raised our rate a quarter of a point, as we have indicated, and we're now going to watch the, the statistics come out to determine whether or not to raise rates higher or not. And the market is desperately looking for a hint, a sign, an idea that maybe possibly, yeah, we're not going to raise rates anymore unless we absolutely have to. Uh, we think that they're high enough for now. And we're going to allow this 5% uh, rate uh, range um, kind of sit here and hopefully have the effect that we hope it'll have on inflation. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, we'll raise rates higher. That's what the market wants to hear. Nothing too complicated. Just, you know, we stopped raising rates for a while. We're going to pause. The word pause is now all over the place. Please, is he going to say the word pause? The Fed decision is it conclude the phrase, we're going to pause the rise of rates for a while. That's all everybody wants to hear. They hear that the market could be up a thousand points. Uh, the market could take off because right now the market is dying for an excuse to go higher. <clears throat> it really wants one. Bank stocks are dying for an excuse where uh, the interest rate policy is on a pause. So that means we're not going to jack the rates to 6% in one month or two months. We're not going to have more bank failures. We get that vibe that, oh, the bank failure game is pretty well done now. We're not going to have any more. 
then certain stocks that have been way oversold will quickly be picked up. And SoFi is definitely in the category of an oversold bank stock that has no need to be oversold. Again, the average analyst's estimation of the fair value of SoFi shares is $8.50. That's what it is. $8.50. It's $4.95. I do rough math and I come up with about three and a half dollars of upside. That's that's where my head's at. Maybe I'm radical, but that's where I'm coming from. Sooner or later, these shares will pop back to 550 to six bucks and we'll build from there that's the end game sooner or later i don't know how later i don't know how sooner but sooner or later that's where we're headed option writers you're not writing options on sofi not yet don't even think about it but on the other side uh there are all kinds of stocks that we're watching here and we're keeping an eye on for option writing opportunities and we note this morning that uh, some of the stocks that we're following are a little bit higher this morning uh, to kind of start the day, which is good to see. Uh, Rocket Labs up eight cents. GameStop just up a penny. Looks like it stopped falling today. Matterport up four cents. Twenty three and Me's up a nickel. Aspire's up a couple of cents. We've got Apple up thirty seven. Goldman up thirteen cents. Cisco's up a dime. Uh, Arc Innovations up seven. Tesla's only off eighteen cents to one sixty thirteen. Microsoft is up a buck fifty eight. Lost fifteen cents yesterday. Pfizer's up seven cents. Lost fifteen yesterday. HPQ is up two cents. Carvana is up two. Alphabet, that's Google, up seventeen cents. Lost one seventy three yesterday. Amazon up thirty five. Gained one fifty eight yesterday as well. Nvidia down two thirty one. And Unity is up eighteen cents. Unity announced another round of layoffs. Should be interesting. There's a couple of headlines that came out this morning, just in the last few minutes. The U.S. Treasury is going to auction off ninety six billion dollars of bonds next week. What does that mean in plain English? Well, the U.S. government every week raises money from the bond market because every week there are bonds maturing from one year ago, two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. There are all these bonds that get issued every week because they replace bonds that are maturing every week. Now, it is likely that $60 billion of these bonds that are have to be issued are just replacing $60 billion of bonds that were created way back when. But 30 additional billion dollars of the bonds are being issued to raise enough money to pay off the spending that is going on. Um, the problem here is that the Federal Reserve is running out of a space with which it's allowed to issue bonds to the market. This coming up week is fine. Uh, the United States will raise more money than it needs, or well, let's put this in. The United States will raise as much money as it needs to pay its bills that Congress has approved last year. But that debt limit, the so-called credit limit that your credit card has, uh, the United States credit limit is quickly approaching because it is a self-induced credit limit that Congress has put in place and is now being used as a weapon and has been for 20 plus years as a weapon by certain parties in power that are not in the White House uh, to try to get the White House to give them what they want. And right now, the uh, Republicans are holding the control of the uh, House of Representatives by five or six, seven votes. And all they want, all they're asking is a reasonable reduction in spending like 40 percent to basically balance the books in one year um can't we just do that um <clears throat> i have news for uh, for all of you and uh, no the united states can't do that uh and it won't do that but you grandstand and you show your voters this is why you voted for us you voted for us to reduce spending and balance the government's budget and we're out there proposing just that right now of course, the fact that we would destroy your community at large by making all of the seniors in the United States get much poorer, much faster, and all those folks who are on Medicare and Medicaid basically get nothing, uh, that's beside the point. Uh, you know, if government just spent less, we wouldn't have so many problems, and the poor would be better off too. 
yeah, okay. We're not going to raise taxes to pay for these bills. Uh, no, 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 no. We passed all these bills to spend more money, but we're not going to raise more money to pay for it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut spending, even though we passed bills, to spend the money. Good luck with this. Uh, this one should be a lot of fun. Oh, by the way, all the electrification of the United States, this idea of, of having electric cars and having you know, way more fuel efficient standards and uh, getting off oil and, and, and you know, creating solar and creating wind farms and creating, you know, uh, battery plants and all that. this so-called drive to do that. We're getting rid of that. We're going back to 1950s, the old days. So let's burn a bunch of oil and coal and make all the electricity we need for this great country of ours. And just let the smoke go over the Atlantic and let the Europeans clean it up. I mean, what the heck? We're America. We won the war. We don't need to do anything. Um, what's the uh, slight, what's the hope in hell of that passing? Uh, zero. Um, the other funny thing about it is uh, go to the ballot box and you ask Americans, uh, hey, listen, uh, <clears throat> we noticed that, uh, you know, uh, those of you who have had relatives in certain states over decades, you'd always get cancer and all kinds of other issues because of all the pollutants going in. You want that to happen again? You want all these pollutants to go back up in the air? You want all these smokestacks replaced? Uh, put up again so that we can burn coal and fossil fuel to make electricity. Where, where would you, hey, uh, hands up, everybody out there, who would like to have a coal-fired electric plant in your neighborhood? Uh, would you like one in uh, Pasadena? Would you like one in Austin, Texas? Would you like one in suburbs of Dallas? Would you like one near Atlanta? Would you like some near Pittsburgh and Philadelphia and Chicago and Detroit? Where do you want them? Because we're going to need about 100 of these coal-fired plants to bring it back to the good old days so that we can burn our own coal from our American soil and make electricity the American way with American know-how. You know, know-how from the 1800s. Uh, thank you, Republicans, for leading the country down the path to the, uh, to the uh, 22nd century. You guys are great. I don't think the voters voted for that. I don't recall every single Republican candidate going to the voters saying, you vote for me and we're going back to 1885. We're going to create steam locomotives again. And we're going to create coal-fired plants and we're going to get rid of clean energy initiatives. Vote for us. Uh, we'll bring America back to where it really belongs. The cesspool. Unbelievable. I hope my sarcasm is filtering through this camera. I don't know. Some people take me for, for my word. In any event, kids, uh, this is dead on arrival. Uh, this uh, negotiated meeting on the 9th of May between McCarthy and uh, the White House, that's going to be a crap show. Um, we don't see much of anything happening there. I think what we'll do is we'll, 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 we'll create a blue, a blue ribbon committee to study the idea of reducing our expenditures. Um, it's called kicking the can down the road because after all, the Republicans want to put up the show, put up the front that we're, we're fiscal conservatives and we're going to bring this house in order. But what they don't want to do is they don't want to be the ones defending all the spending cuts that are going to have to be implemented during an election year. And we are entering an election year for the presidency of the United States. And so the Republicans will actually kind of want to get this done sooner rather than later. I'm thinking by the fall, they want this finished off and they'd like to have a deal that they could kind of say, we won this one and we're really limiting spending and it's going to be great. And when you allow us to finish the job by electing a Republican president again, we'll finish the job and the budgets will be completely balanced just like they were completely balanced under every single Republican president ever elected since Dwight D. Eisenhower. Um, okay, so let's go over history. Did Eisenhower have a balanced budget? I don't think so. Did, uh, did uh, Nixon have a balanced budget? Uh, uh, no. Did, uh, did uh, Ford have a balanced budget? Uh, no. Did uh, Ronnie Reagan have a balanced Oh, God, no. no. Ronnie Reagan blew the roof off of the U.S. deficit, and he was president of the United States when the Dow Jones had the single worst 
day in the history of stock markets, a 22% drop in one day on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, Ronnie Reagan was the worst for the deficit. Did George W. Bush ever have a balanced budget? No, George W., he said no new taxes, but then he had to raise taxes because Ronnie Reagan destroyed the economy so badly he had to raise taxes. He didn't get reelected because he broke his promise. Who had a balanced budget and actually a surplus? B Bill Clinton. Uh, Bill Clinton's presidency actually had balanced and surplus budgets for about four years in a row. And no one talks about it because <laughs> who wants to talk about that stuff? Uh, let's talk about Monica Lewinsky. Let's not talk about the fact that the U.S. Treasury stopped issuing 30-year bonds for four years because they didn't need the money. Uh, bonds would mature and the Federal Reserve would replace some of the bonds, but not all of the bonds because they had more money coming in than they needed to pay off the debt. Unbelievable. Did the debt get eliminated? No, no. Why? Because the, the surpluses, while they were okay, were not records that were amounts that would allow the United States to pay off its debt in 10 years. When you have debt accumulated over a long, long period of time, it's going to take a long, long time to pay it off, unless you, you want to raise taxes and, and do it in a hurry. Uh, as soon as George W. Bush Jr. took over, he cut taxes. <laughs> he cut taxes. And the deficit was back with a vengeance. And uh, uh, president after that, Mr. Obama, he inherited a real crap show the 2007-8-9 financial crisis was waiting for him and his presidency when he took over. And all of a sudden, the United States had to bail out all kinds of companies, including General Motors and others. Uh, after that, uh, well, we know who the uh, clown was in the White House. The clown show for four years took over. Was there a balanced budget during the clown show? No, 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 no. And is there a balanced budget now? No, there's no balanced budget. Now, COVID has made a point of making sure that's not going to happen. And so here we are with higher interest rates, higher inflation, higher deficit, and uh, an economy that is slowing down. And they're hoping for a soft landing, and there may not be a soft landing. It might be a rough landing. It might be a very long drawn out recession. Don't know, but we're not going anywhere with the clown show in the Congress right now because you got wackos over there who want to go every direction under the sun, under the Republican ticket. The Democrats are just going, what do you want to cut? Show us show us your budget. Just just show us where we'll, we'll go to the voters with it, um, but they're not going to do that. They're going to blame Biden on everything. It's all Biden's fault. It's all Biden's fault. Uh, okay, well, blame all you want, but you're in leading the Congress, so Show us where the cuts are. Uh, these are now becoming discoverable. The people are figuring out where the cuts are being proposed, and people are horrified at the mere mention of these massive cuts. But hey, just just saying from the outside looking in, it's um, it's the entertaining show, isn't it? Uh, the market right now is up twenty three points on the Dow. There you go, point zero seven of a one percent gain at the moment. The bank stocks are oversold. Uh, unthinkable that bank stocks are the problem in the market, actually. They're actually the problem. The entities with all the cash are the problem. I find that to be wacky. Um, but in any event, uh, bankers have a problem with their in their own discipline, and that is certain bankers out there get very aggressive because they feel that, well, you know, as the CEO of this bank and the, as board of directors of these banks, we're only going to be around for 15, 20 years. And then we get replaced with other people. Uh, we got to make money now because I'm the CEO of this company and I got to make my hundred million dollars in the next five years because then someone else takes over after that. And I got to be rich. I got to be rich like today. So we're going to take the bank into a direction where there's real profitability, like High-end risky car loans, um, you know, back in 07, 08, uh, ninja loans on mortgages, no income, no verification, no job, give them a half a million dollar mortgage, uh, houses always go up in value, it's no big deal. Now we have uh, shopping centers that are overfinanced, office towers overfinanced. The commercial real estate sector is a mess right now, a big, big mess. Did you know that the insurance that is paid by investors uh, regarding uh, interest rates on office towers is now something like three, three and a half percent 
on top of the loan. So it, it used to be if you had like a oh a, a, a hundred million dollar office tower, you would you would pay a hundred thousand dollars in insurance so that you'd only have to worry about paying three uh, percent interest on your loan. Now it's uh, uh, $3.5 million a year uh, I- I insurance premium uh, to keep your rate at 3% because rates are 6.5%. It's it's devastating. Uh, there are uh, office towers that are filled with, with office workers uh, or half filled or three quarters filled, and they're losing money because their values are dropping. And owners of these buildings uh, who are, in effect, d- indebted to their bankers uh, are really in big trouble. And uh, there are bankers out there going, gosh, you know, we, we lent these guys $50 million for that tower and that tower. And we did that development over there. We've lent billions of dollars in commercial real estate that always pays. And we're still getting paid, but the value of our loans is at half the value. Because we were issuing loans at 2% and 3% interest two years ago, three years ago. Now uh, we have to ask 6 and 7% interest for loans which means our old loans are way down in value. And that's where the banks are in trouble. The banks are going, yeah, um, if we were to uh, try to sell our mortgages that we've issued, we'd only get 50 cents on the dollar for them right now in this current interest rate environment. Um, depositors are going, what? Say what? Uh, all that money I deposited into the bank, into my savings account, and what have you, uh, you, you lent that out at 2 and 3%. And that's all you're getting for it for the next 20 years. Uh, And it's only worth half the money. That's my money. Uh, Maybe I'll withdraw my money and put it into another bank that's not into commercial mortgages, not into risky car loans, not into regular real estate interest rate back in 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 mortgages. Uh, But then what banks do you go into? Uh, Where else do you think banks lend money out to? Uh, What else is there? Uh, Personal loans. uh, What's a personal loan for? A personal loan to buy furniture in the house that you pay 2% interest on. Um, isn't that why you buy new furniture? Because you got a new house or you're replacing for Or maybe you're borrowing $50,000 against your house as a home equity loan on the house you're paying 2.5% interest on that you've been in for 15 years and you just did a new mortgage four years ago. Banks are into real estate big time. That is the safest place for banks to go, along with government bonds. Of course, government bonds are trading at 50, 60 cents on the dollar as well. Because when the interest rates rise from virtually nothing to 5% in one year to tackle inflation that was not created by the American people, uh, you're going to have problems. And you're going to have overexposed lenders out there with debt that they've issued, that they thought they were doing a good job on, that is now underwater in value. And here we go with what's been going on lately. Um, Sell now and ask questions later. Welcome to the party, pal. Uh, In plain English, I hope I've been able to help you understand it. Um, We're not done yet with this nonsense. It's going to continue for a while. And inflation is not yet defeated. Despite all the rhetoric and all the talk, Look at the unemployment rate, 3.5%. What was ADP's number this morning? 297,000 jobs were created last month, according to the ADP report. That's incredibly bullish. That's bad news for the stock market. Believe it or not, that's bad news because the Fed is going to look at that and go, geez, we got to raise these rates again. This economy is not slowing down. But of course, the problem with the Fed all along was, Critics were saying to the Federal Reserve, you should have raised rates the year before you raised rates because the inflationary uh, gauges were already showing problems. The reality, though, is the inflation rate that really took off wasn't due to greedy American workers demanding 20% pay raises three years ago. There were no American workers demanding raises of 20% three years ago. Three years ago, American workers and Canadian workers and other workers were just grateful to have a job and were still tolerating 1% to 2% pay raises a year because the employers were saying inflation is nice and low. Uh, we're all good here. Um, and the money, the profits were shared by the shareholders and the upper management of these organizations. They kept 90% of the upside and gave 10% as a cost of living increase to their employees. 
year in and year out and year in and year out for over a decade. It wasn't American workers that made inflation go crazy. It was the supply chain issue that created the havoc, the anticipation of the loosening of restrictions of travel and business created a shortage of certain materials for certain entities, including the Home Depots, the Walmarts, the Targets, the Costcos, who needed spring merchandise for the spring season. They didn't need winter merchandise for the summer season. They didn't need summer merchandise for the winter season. They needed their merchandise now ASAP. They put their orders into their factories in China and they secured these container ships in mass, on mass, and paid top dollar to bring merchandise across the oceans, which allowed every operator of every container ship in the world to raise their rates by as much as 100 or a thousand percent, 10 times as much. And so, guess what happened? It landed in America. All this stuff landed in America with a higher price tag on it. And it filtered into the economy within three months. And from zero in inflation, 1% inflation, 2% inflation, to 6 8 and 10% inflation within one year happened. And it happened in Europe. It happened in the USA because everybody wanted everything at the same time. And it was impossible to deliver. And there we go. This is not an inflation issue that American workers created or Canadian workers or European workers at all. But that is what the bankers seem to be indicating to the rest of the world that well, we're trying to fight inflation right now. What you're making the, the world do is you're making the workers of the, the world pay the price for inflation that was created from a logistical shortage of goods and services for a while. And they're supposed to take a lower standard of living for the rest of their lives as punishment for this inflation. And by doing it, by doing what they're doing, raising rates and trying to slow down economies, they're creating layoffs. They're trying to create layoffs and firings. And we've seen it happen in the tech space already. It's already starting in certain areas of the economy. There's layoffs already being announced everywhere. But the underlying strength of the uh, American consumer is still there because Americans saved money during the pandemic. They saved money because they didn't spend money during the pandemic. Millions of vacations were not taken. Millions of cars were not actually acquired in the early part of the pandemic. Uh, delayed purchases were part of the game plan here. And so you have a lot of Americans, Canadians, Europeans with cash and lower debt than going into the pandemic. And so the demand for goods and services is there and employment demand is there. And a lot of folks have figured out, I don't need to work at the office. I can work from home like I did during the pandemic and I'm going to stay there. And that means a slowdown coming in certain sectors of the economy will continue because we are not seeing billions or hundreds of millions of people commuting to work anymore like they used to. There used to be a lot of money in the commuting business, easy money in the commuting business. And also every jet in the air flying internationally had all kinds of business passengers in the front of the plane in the business class paying top dollar for their flights today, business class sections are filled with tourists more than business people. And the tourists have figured out, I'll use my points that I've racked up for five years and pay some cash and use points for the rest. That's what's going on. Corporations have cut back on business class spending and haven't opened the spigot again. So the airlines are benefiting from increased traffic. Oh, yeah but they're not getting the big spenders like they used to. And this will catch up to the airlines as the months go by. In any event, here we are. We're up nine points on the Dow Jones. This is a nothing burger right now. We're up four points on S&P. We're up 17 on NASDAQ. Oil down 223 to 69.43. 69.43 a barrel in Texas. We're under 75 in Brent in Europe's price. The oil prices are plummeting right now, and uh, <clears throat> this won't be good for Exxon's second quarter. Not good for Chevron, uh, but uh, good for the American consumer. Ooh. Should be interesting. Could be bad news for Tesla. Think about it. If oil prices drop 
even further and gasoline drops down into the low threes in the mid two dollar a gallon neighborhood a number of people who might have thought about the possibility of perhaps going into an electric car might say you know i can buy a um, uh, you know i can buy a new vehicle for the family uh, um, and i'm happy paying 250 a gallon instead of getting a, an electric car for seventy five thousand dollars um that might be bad news for temporarily for tesla not forever but temporarily might not be a good thing stuff to think about we'll have to see how that plays out uh so fine right now 496.85 cents a share let's just call it 497 right now trying to get back to five is it possible that if uh, sofi breaks 5 5 10 5 515 that we could go right to 550 a share anything is possible tesla by the way down 19 cents this morning so far the lower oil price is not hampering tesla shares this morning to move to do anything they're really not getting hammered in any big way all right there you have it kids we're opening up for trading in about 19 minutes from now we'll beginning we'll begin the trade um barons is saying headline here bed bath and beyond shares starts delisting today it was once a star stock when the nasdaq exchange opens on wednesday it will be one stock lighter as bed bath and beyond starts the process of delisting from the public market as of may 3rd trading in bed bath beyond common stock will be suspended the company said in the filing and security exchange commission nasdaq sent bed bath a delisting notice following the company's april 23rd filing for chapter 11 protection uh on tuesday yesterday bed bath's last full day of trading the shares lost 27 percent closing at seven percent Bed Bath stocks down 90%, 97% on the year in a shed, roughly 99% of its value in the last three year period. Analysts have warned that this would happen. Bankrupt filings, bankruptcy filings tend to result in lost value for shareholders. And that is the story. The company Bed Bath Mountain was founded in 1971. Um, and they originally carried towels and linens. By 87, the company expanded its merchandise assortment to carry other household wares, prompting the name change to Bed Bath & Beyond. After 1987, five years later, the company uh, was listed on the NASDAQ exchange, June 92, and it, 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 this ushered 20 years of rapid growth for the retailer. First year of a billion in sales was 1998, and by 2006, they had 888 stores 48 states, uh, up from 34 states in 1992. Bed Bath also completed Bed Bath Beyond also completed the acquisition of Bye Bye Baby. Investors rewarded the company's performance uh, in 20 years following its initial public offering. Bed Bath stock gained over 5,700 percent, trumping the S&P 500's 233 percent gain during the same period, and the Nasdaq Composite 420 percent rise over that time frame. Stock closed at an all-time record high, January 2014, at $80.48 a share. E-commerce became more popular, and that was the beginning of the end of this company, unfortunately. And there you have it. Uh, lots of uh, uh, sad stories there. Um, and the final gasp, the final nail in the coffin for Bed Bath & Beyond happened. The moment that they rejected Ryan Cohen's offer to come on in there and help turn the company around as their shares hit 30 bucks a share one last time. And uh, Ryan Cohen was told, thanks, but we don't think we're going to go your way to save this company. I think what we'll do, they said, is we'll go to Wall Street and do it the old fashioned way. And this way we can keep our stock bonuses, our stock options, our cushy jobs and uh, we can keep our titles and none of us will get laid off and let go and thank you anyway but we saw what you did to the gamestop guys you got rid of everybody at gamestop including all the board of directors the presidents and the vp you dropped everybody and cut wages and salaries and expenses and we're not going to play that game at bed bath beyond because after all we're an s p 500 company and we're one of those big outfits that we have deep deep connections in wall street that will take care of everything and it didn't and uh, the 30 dollars stock price is now a distant memory and mr cohen by the time he got the hell out of there it was 16 to 18 bucks a share he took a hike and so did all of mr cohen's followers 
who were buying into that stock thinking, oh, this is another GameStop. This guy's going to be able to fund this company. He could probably have the company do a financing through the open market, just like he did with GameStop. He could probably help this company raise a couple of billion bucks uh, in, in the next six months, and that'll stave off any issues with Bed Bath & Beyond. But no, Bed Bath & Beyond didn't want to go the Ryan Cohen way. They wanted to stay in power. Well, they have stayed in power right until the end. Unfortunately, the CFO, Chief Financial Officer, probably saw the writing on the wall, knew the end was near, and unfortunately and tragically committed suicide about six, eight months. I can't remember exactly when this was. It was after the Ryan Cohen walkout. Um, he uh, leapt to his death from his balcony of his condo, unfortunately. Uh, he knew he had lost it all. And sure enough, here we go. The stock is going to be delisted. Everyone is wiped out that's still into this thing. And I've been begging all of you, stay the hell away from Bed Bath Beyond stock. And there you go. It is it is now just a memory. And there you have it, unfortunately. You want some good news? How about SoFi trading at $5 a share right now on the pre-market with 14 minutes to go? SoFi at $5 a share, 653,000 traded this morning, nothing heavy. And look at that. It didn't take a lot of stock trading to actually pop it back to five. The yesterday's low, 472, right now trading at five. I know why it's trading at five. There's nothing for sale. Everybody who wanted out got the hell out. The shorters have shorted, and now they're beginning to think, uh, wait a minute, it's not at 425 like I thought it would be. I, I thought it would be 410 by now. Uh, I shorted this at 540, 530, 525, 515, 510. I got it under five dollars. I got it down to 490. We got it down to 480. Hey, hey, we're winning. Uh, it's back to five. Oops. Um, some of these shorters are losing money now, and the higher the stock goes, the worse for the shorters it gets, and the more panicked they become because they begin to ask themselves, maybe we went too low too quickly. And there are going to be a bunch of hedge funds, hedge funds buying up SoFi today, along with other investors who are coming after this cheap stock, which there isn't very much available. Of. And we could be popping to 550 today. Oops. Uh, yes, that's called the big oops. Or we like to say the word, oh, yeah, zzz, uh, here we go. On the other direction, get ready for possibly a run on your SoFi. I don't know. Bill, I bought mine yesterday, 473, baby. Oh, yeah. Nice doing, nice going. Flash infection, a flash infection. Good morning, all. Let's go so far. Yes, indeed. Giddy up, not too bad. Uh, anyway, like I say, it's possible. Um, is Noto buying today? He could be buying the stock too. I don't know what his uh, restrictions are regarding uh, when you're allowed to buy as a CEO or not. Can't tell you, but um, I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to get more if he can do it. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a little pop here on SoFi just as a little, you know, a little hi, how are you? Uh, let's see a little recovery here because we are, let's just say, way oversold on SoFi. Way oversold on SoFi. There's the story, okay? Robert Benson, I bought way back at 463, man. Uh, way, to, way to go, pal. Way to go. Uh, anyway, interesting stuff. We'll watch the opening here in about 12 minutes. Thank you all for joining me this morning. Thanks again to all of you out there who have been figuring out how to write options against your stock positions. I congratulate you out there. You've taken the initiative to take control of your finances. Uh, I was thinking about uh, my rant yesterday where I was mentioning to you guys about how if you have a um, um, money tied up, with a wealth advisor, uh, with the firms that you know manage money for you through mutual funds, through your works uh, at your job, some kind of you know investment thing that you got going. It's possible that a lot of you right now are are and have been uh, paying a two percent fee buried in your results. By the way, you, you you're told you made eight percent, you actually made ten, but you only got eight of it. Uh, you've been paying 2% to uh, fund managers for decades. And 2% doesn't sound like a lot of money. It really doesn't sound like a lot of money. Uh, what's 2%? Big deal. whoop de doo But then you do the math. And this, this is where I cringe. There are viewers of this channel 
um, and there are viewers of many other YouTube channels, investors around the world, millions, hundreds of millions of investors around the world who don't realize it, that are paying a 2% fee buried deep into their investments at retirement funds. And uh, some of you here have uh, had a um, hundred to 200 to $300,000 growing over the last five, 10, 15 years, because you've been working for 30, 35 years. Uh, and what you don't know is if you have, um, 200,000 bucks in, in an IRA or a 401k plan or whatever, and it's uh, in, a, you know, in an investment pool of some kind, you're paying 2% uh, on your 200,000 every year. You're paying $4,000 a year in management fees. And if you're still going to be working for another 10 years before you finish up your work, and you're going to go from this 200,000 maybe to 300,000 in volume, you're going to be paying between 4,000 a year in fees all the way up to 6,000 a year in fees by the time you stop paying fees for the next decade. That, my friends, is 40 to 60,000 dollars out of your pocket that you're giving away to managers to manage your money that they've already got. Um, and a lot of the management moves are slight adjustments to the portfolios. Um, they're not going to outperform the market for you. They're not going to make you 100% profit in any one year when the market makes 10%. You're going to be lucky to equal the market as a whole. What I'm suggesting to all of you out there who are sitting on 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 and more, you may want to seriously consider becoming your own manager, your own money market manager. And one of the ways to manage your account and have it generate a better return is to consider the idea, as conservative as it sounds, uh, buy IBM stock as an example. Uh, there are many others like this where you get a yield of over 5% on your money just from the dividend. Um, and being a shareholder of that company, every quarter you get one and a quarter percent on your value of your, your portfolio, approximately. Um, and you can write stock options against this stuff. If you own 100 IBM, 500 IBM, 1500 IBM, whatever that is, or any other stock that pays this kind of dividend, you can write stock options against this on a very conservative basis. Or you're writing options maybe two months out uh, that are 10% above the price of the stock. And you can haul in, I would bet you, you could haul in between 8 and 20% a year additional revenue from option premiums. Very conservative. I'm talking about boring, boring option rights that many of you go, oh, Bruce, I can't even imagine doing something like that. I need I need more than that. I need to be stimulated. This, this isn't enough for me. But for some of you out there, you're looking at this going, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm getting 5% from the company. And you're telling me I could get 15% more from option premiums? That's 20% a year to my account. I, I'm only getting 6 to 8% now. If I could get 20% uh, and I'm retiring in five or six years and I'm sitting on 200,000 bucks, 200,000, 20% return, that's $40,000 that my account is growing this year. Uh, I got five, 10 years to go. I need five, 10 years of 40,000 or more a year being added to my account from my account itself, plus whatever I'm throwing into it. You think about that in five years, you may literally double or more the value of your account. Uh, all of a sudden you're saying a four five, six hundred thousand dollars generating 20% return. Hey, hello, 120,000 coming in with a $600,000 account. In other words, when you do retire and you begin to withdraw money from your IRA, you're withdrawing less money than the IRA is making. In other words, it's still growing in size, even though you've retired and you're withdrawing from it. You got your Social Security coming in. You got your IRA <clears throat> money's coming out. And the IRA is bigger every year. This is the problem you need. This is the problem you want to get to. But many of you out there don't have that problem and are not going to have that problem. You're going to have the other problem. And that one is, I'm withdrawing so much a year from my IRA and it's only growing by half as much. It is depleting every year. And I see a, a date, a certain time in the future where my IRA will be worth nothing and I'm only living on Social Security at the most vulnerable time in my life when I'm in my 70s or 80s and I am really in trouble because I have got politicians on my butt right now that want to make my benefits go away. These guys are trying to balance budgets and they're targeting seniors and others on the low end of the chain. You can't be caught in that 
field. You can't be caught there. You're going to have to sell your house. You're going to have to sell your possessions. And you might say to yourself, ah, Bruce, yeah, no big deal. When I'm 80, I'm not going to want a house anyway. I'm going to want to be in a senior center. I'm going to want to do this and do that. Or I'm going to have my kids look after me, blah, 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 blah. Talk all you want. Talk bravely all you want, my friends. But there are people today in their 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s that are destitute, that have never gotten to the point of a decent retirement. They're living in trailers. They're living in tent cities. Uh, they're homeless under bridges. And then there are those who thought they would end up in a seniors type center to only to find out that at 8,000 bucks a month to get into some of these places, they don't have the dough. They have two years worth of rent and that's it. And then they are completely broke. Uh, no, uh, you cannot count on someone else to take care of that issue. You've got to want to do it. And while you're able to handle this and do it now and save, uh, save your own uh, retirement, and those of you in your 30s and 40s, you got to get with the program here. It's time to build your value, build your estate, and build your asset base. One option is to consider, one selection, one idea, learn how to write stock options against a portfolio that you have. And uh, hey, if you go to my website and you check out the classes that I've put together to, you know, like I've said here, to help people out uh, um, understand how the option market works, how it, how it functions, here's the website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. That's my homepage. You'll recognize that face. There's the link to the classes right there. And then scroll down and there's class number one, lesson number two, lesson number three, lesson number four, all the way up to lesson number 15, how to write poor man cover calls, how to roll them over, advanced strategies, the whole thing. You put your mind to it and learn and watch these classes. They're one and a half to two hours each. Take a class a week, maybe one class every two weeks. Make, make, a, make a ritual of it, maybe every weekend. I am taking, I'm going to take another class of Bruce's classes every weekend. I am going to do this for 15 weeks in a row. I'm going to complete something for the first time in my life. I'm going to start something and I'm going to finish it. And I'm going to understand what he's talking about, about how these options work and how they trade and how I can write options myself. You might, most likely, you'll find out so much more information about the market and investing than just options, because you have to. You have got to understand how markets work as a whole. You have to understand what oil prices mean to the stock market. You have to understand and grab the concept of inflation, higher interest rates, the unemployment rate, economic indicators. You've got to learn why all this matters in your existence, believe it or not. I'm not trying to make you into an economics major. I'm not trying to turn you into a master's degree mathematics genius. I am trying in a plain English kind of way, even in these classes, plain English, how this works and where you can take control of your life and your future. If you feel it's worth it to grab control of your life, check these classes out, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. That's the name of the website. That's the address. It's a Canadian address. I'm a Canuck. Stockmarketswithbruce.ca is where you go. The classes are available for purchase whenever you want. You can buy at the moment if you want to. You could take advantage of an offer I've had going there for about a, about a month now. Five for the price of four, any five you want. I recommend you start with the first five. Then I recommend take the next five, and then I recommend take the third five. Uh, if you want to buy all 15, triple that and pick them up right away, of course. This offer ends very shortly. Um, again, those of you who have taken advantage of this offer, congratulations. You've got work to do. You have classes to watch. Uh, good news for those of you who take these classes, those of you who hang out uh, doing that, you can hang out here with me every day during the market, two hours every morning, 8.30 to 10.30 Eastern time. And if you've got a question about these classes, you send me an email or send me a note on this show. You want to know something about class lesson number six or whatever, you don't quite get it, send me an email, ask the professor, what, it, what, what does this mean? I'll be happy to help you out. If, however, any of you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me, and talk to me about your uh, 
your uh, scenario, your your the world in which you live that is changing on you dramatically, you can look me up for a one hour session, a one on one video call where we'll be on camera together. It's four hundred dollars for an hour. You send me a private email and say, Bruce, I want to have a one on one session with you. <clears throat> I happen to have. I got laid off at work uh, three months ago where I'm being notified I'm out of here and they're giving me a goodbye check and I get to take my savings with me. Uh, is it possible that I don't have to go to work full time for somebody else? Do I have enough assets where I could actually make enough money off these these assets to live off of it now? Um, help me out here. And what would you recommend I should look into doing and not doing? Uh, what mistakes do you recommend I not make? If I can help you not make mistakes, I think I have more than paid for my time. But again, up to you if you are into taking control of your life and running your future yourself. Or do you want to depend on these asset managers, these wealth managers, whatever they call themselves, and um, um, take a mediocre return on your money and uh, a mediocre retirement? It's up, it's up to you. If you've got an outstanding, incredible wealth manager that is bringing you 20% returns year in and year out and year in and year out, congratulations. Don't change a damn thing. Get rich with these guys. But I have a strong suspicion that in the bear market that we've been in and with some of these bank stocks not doing too well and interest rates doing what they're doing, your portfolios out there are not performing perhaps as they should be or have been in the past. You may want to make a change, and that is time for you to take over. Let me know if I can help you. Send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to you. All right. There you go, everybody. Welcome to the show. I think our friend Larry Titus has done the ultimate Thank you very much. Ultimate favor. He's rung the opening bells, and we are now trading, and we're up and writing. And I thank you, all of you. JR is saying thanks. Uh, uh, bought a hundred so far before the bell says Ricardo. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, all of you who are here today. Thank you, all of you who have uh, become members of this channel. Cannot emphasize how important it is for this channel's survival where you folks have come together, you've, uh, you've uh, become members of this channel to be part of the family. During market hours, we go member only on chat, which is what we're doing right now. Please consider becoming a member of this uh, community, following us here. We'd love to have you uh, become part of the family. You're keeping us on the air. I thank you all so very much for your involvement of this channel. Uh, we have 135 thumbs up so far. Thank you all of you who are just automatically hitting the thumbs up button. All of you on the rerun out there that hit the thumbs up button without me even begging for thumbs ups. We try to hit 200 every show in the morning and we have 135 and counting right now. Thank you all. Keep those thumbs ups coming on in. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks, Larry says, Bama, babe, uh, Cindy B, ding, ding, ding. We're up and running. Here we go. Uh, we're up and running. Boris is saying that FRCB, the shares of the First Republic Bank, are back up and trading at 38 cents, uh, going through their death rows. Spire Global launches a space-powered weather insights platform for the maritime industry. Yet again, Spire announces another positive announcement on their business and I don't know if it's making a difference in the stock or not. Uh, I hope it does, but I do not know for sure. Um, we'll keep an eye on these markets. Hang on one second while I get my iPhone through all of the apps that I've opened up, get rid of them all, and see how the market is looking this morning. It appears that the Dow Jones at the moment is maybe down one point. Uh, maybe down one point. Um, we've got uh, AI down 15 cents, Unity down 18 cents. GameStop up 22 to 18.77. SoFi 494.5 up 4 cents at this second. We'll see if it breaks through 5 this morning. Tesla up 77 cents. Apple up 153. Google up 15 cents. Moderna down 30. Cisco down a penny. Pfizer down 27 cents. IBM down 39. ATIP is up 7 tenths of a penny. Sixtera down 3 tenths of a penny. Black Bed Bath Beyond is seven and a half cents last trade. I don't think it's trading this morning. HPQ up two pennies. Microsoft up 73. Uh, 23 and me up a penny. Matterport down two. Rocket Lab up two. Smart Rent down a penny. Spire up 3.7 cents at 69 and a half cents. This company continues to make constant announcements 
about new contracts that they sign uh, with different agencies around the world to manage satellites, and the stock does not get rewarded. It is absolutely unbelievable how this company is growing and growing and growing and consistently adding clients. Stock doesn't go up. It, it uh, defies logic, but that's what it is. Amazon up 51 cents. Home Depot up 123. Manic Vectors down 59. Netflix up 66 cents. Adobe down 494. Goldman Sachs down 82 cents. Boeing up 149. Facebook, which is Meta, up 106. Uh, Royal Caribbean up 11 cents. We have uh, Target up 35 cents. JP Morgan down 77. Costco's up 233, a slow rebound happening there after a big drop the other day. Walmart up 77 cents. Disney is up 39 cents to $100.98. NVIDIA down 317. American Airlines up 4 cents to 1381. And that's where we're at right now. Down 25 points at the moment on the Dow Jones. And uh, GameStop is up 18. SoFi 493 a share at the moment. The range on SoFi on the open market, 493 to 499, but only 2.1 million traded today. Yesterday at this time, we were already at 10 million shares. We have really backed off, which is telling me short sellers have stopped hitting the stock. They are now thinking we might be around the lows. We might just nibble them up now and buy them back. I'm waiting for the street to catch that drift and catch that wave of of, of uh, observance and go, we're going to buy this stuff up and run this thing. And uh, that's what I'm waiting for. I don't know if it will happen this morning. The interest rate announcement is coming out around noontime or something like that. Uh, so until Powell speaks, nothing's really going to happen in the market, generally speaking. That's my take on it. That's my guess. I might be dead wrong, but so far... 493 up two and a half cents on SoFi. Tesla up 156, Apple up 176. All right. Aaron is asking me, Bruce, do you put any stock into the idea that the big banks don't like SoFi or Noto and want to crush it and then buy the company at a low price? Uh, no, no stock in that whatsoever. Um, that is uh, just idle chatter at the, at the water cooler. The big banks are really not worried about SoFi. They really aren't worried about SoFi. Um, Amer Bank of America with $2 trillion of deposits, worrying about SoFi with $10 billion of deposits, not even on their radar. Um, they really don't care. What I think is uh, more likely a scenario is an entity that is not in banking right now would like to get into banking, but not branches uh, like in downtown, you know, towns and in the cities in the United States. Fintech. Uh, if an outfit out there wants to get into fintech without starting it from scratch, the fastest way into a fintech business is to buy a fintech business. Um, that's where SoFi could come in. Now, the problem is with SoFi, for anyone out there, if you want to buy SoFi, you want to earn own more than 10% of SoFi, you need the approval, I believe, you need the approval of the uh, Treasury and the Federal Reserve. Because this is a chartered bank. This is a chartered bank. That makes them protected against a 25% a, a shareholder coming in, trying to buy a quarter of the company. Maximum 10% only. And so no one bank can crush it. Uh, and no one bank would want to be the one accused of crushing a competitor. That that wouldn't be good for the PR. Not a good move at all. And you're not going to crush this company. The company's not going out of business because the stock fluctuates in price. It's whether people deposit money into the account or not. And at four and what a quarter percent interest right now. Uh, last I heard, you're getting four and a quarter percent interest on uh, SoFi deposits. People are putting money into SoFi, more money in than out, and it's growing with new members. But it's not a factor, and it's not a threat to the top five banks in the United States at all. So, no, nobody wants to do that. Uh, let's see. Alberto, uh, Ricardo, pile dancing ain't for the faint of heart. Alberto, a financial, I own and I have a year plan before I start to draw from the market. Until the end of the year, all premiums are to compound shares. Hence, my positions in Tesla and several others. Uncle is correct 
uh, after 25 cover calls compounding doubles, triples in share buys. JR, Alberto, uh, working on Tesla, but it's been slow. Karen, still holding my spire. Alberto, JR, slowly but surely. Yep, yep. Uh, Marcus, 143 thumbs up. Thank you. M. Grant, like Amazon? Akron. Aaron, thank you. That makes sense. Uh, Alberto, I prefer eBay over Amazon, but I'm selling covered calls on both. There you go. There you have it. The Dow off just eight points. Uh, again, it's a quiet market. Uh, I expect it to be quiet most of the morning unless something breaks somewhere, but I don't see it. We'll see what gives uh, gets uh, happens here. Um, let's see what else is going on here. There we go. We are now at uh, uh, a loss of 13.9 for the Dow. Uh, we're up six on S and P, up 34 on Nasdaq. Oil 69.41, down two dollars 25 cents a barrel. Uh, 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 SoFi shares 488 at the moment, 489, down about a penny and a half. Could SoFi fluctuate? Uh, 460 to five dollars all morning yeah sure sure it, it can do that yeah no question but is there a potential point in time where sofi is so oversold that there could be a vicious vicious breakup on the upside yes the longer this goes on the more vicious an up move will become and it will catch people blindly and badly um on in the wrong direction uh, no doubt in my mind this the company is uh, being uh, called an 850 stock by the average of all analysts that's the average consensus 850 some say five some say 15 average 850 the stock's 489 490 a share it's ridiculously cheap 3.9 million traded so far, not as heavy in the past, as in the past couple of days. GameStop is up 14 cents, 18.72. Tesla up 163. Apple up 161. All right. Uh, is anyone else following this alleged drone attack on uh, Putin or the Kremlin? No impact on the market so far. This could lead to more saber rattling. Um, yeah, I mean, as it gets more ridiculous, there could well be factions inside Russia going after him. You never know. This guy is already paranoid within his own community. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see what happens there. Um, it's uh, it's interesting uh, to hear this kind of stuff come out, um, uh, how the markets react to it. Uh, I, I, I really I don't really know. I, I feel that, that uh, Putin, Putin has a, a bigger problem uh, than being arrested by international law enforcement. I think he is a bigger one. That is domestically, is he about to be taken out by some of, some from within, from within? And it might not be pretty, but uh, I, I really don't know. M. Grand, sorry, I mean a big player that wants to get into fintech. Amazon fits and could afford it easily. Correct. Um, uh, Amazon could buy, uh, could try to buy these guys or um, uh, Apple or uh, Meta or... Um, yeah, I mean Google. Um, that's true. Any of the Fang stocks, theoretically, not not Amazon, not uh, not Netflix though. But um, Walmart might want to buy these guys up. Uh, but again, um, you're going to need approval from the regulators, and I don't see uh, SoFi being interested in being sold out for six bucks. They're not going to want to go. No, no, we'll take seven dollars and walk. No, no, no. He's looking at this guy. Are you kidding me? Uh, five, ten years from now, we're a couple hundred bucks a share. I'm not. We're not selling at six or seven. Scram, get lost. Now, what I would like to see, what I would like to understand here, what I'd like to know, is if uh, an investor like Carl Icahn or uh, or uh, 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 Brian Cohen, um, any 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 large investor out there, hedge fund was to announce that uh, we are we own 8% of this company and we like the long-term prospects. If an outfit, if a guy like, uh, I don't see a Warren Buffett coming in because it's not a dividend payer. It's got to go down the road a ways before Warren Buffett gets in. Uh, by the time Warren gets into a stock like this, and Mr. Buffett and his group, this stock would be 40 bucks a share already paying a dividend. It's then they get in for the next 20 years, 40 to 400, where, from here to 40, 50 bucks a share, it, it's going to require um, smaller retail investors and more aggressive fund managers to come in. Uh, I'm waiting for the day when we get a we get a filing being made 
that de someone declares that they have a five and a half percent position in the company and they like the company. Uh, the day where on CNBC, the uh, host is talking to a hedge fund manager who says, yeah, we just bought up 8% of SoFi. We love this thing. We think this thing has got phenomenal upside. We're buying into it. Well, that, that's what I'm waiting for. Any any entity like that, uh, that would put a run on this stock in a hurry. But um, I don't know if today's the day for that. Today, I don't know. SoFi hit me at 487, says Richard. Richard, now come to 477, please. Um, I've already got hit at 47. Now hit me at 477. We're at 487.6, down 2.9 cents on SoFi. Um, Aaron Millen, a couple of hundred bucks a share. Is that a realistic figure, do you think, Bruce? Yes, I do. I do think so. Uh, once this stock once this stock is making six, seven bucks a share profit, uh, 20 times earnings, uh, you got a $120, $140 stock. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that the growth curve of SoFi will be much higher and faster than traditional banks. These guys are not going to grow at 5% a year for the next five years. These guys are going to grow at 30, 40, 50% a year for the next five years compounded. It's going to take SoFi to a completely different level. A mid-level bank in five years is entirely possible. So on deposit, $100 billion, $200 billion. Yep, I see that. I absolutely see it. Um, I see... Uh, Two, three million members a year growing, uh, coming into this bank. 15, 20 million members in five years. Uh, you know, four times the size or more, six times the size. That'll put them at 50, 60, 70 billion in assets and climbing. Um, they will, they will, yeah, they are going up there. That's uh, my, my thing. Uh, Alberto, Richard, that's the way dips are delicious. There you have it. Uh, 484 now. Down 5.7 cents. Tesla up 222. Apple down 209. AI down 22 cents. Unity up two. And the Dow is off 18.8. So we got 483 on SoFi down seven cents. So yesterday's low, 472. Okay, that's the story. Home skillet, 148 on the thumbs up meter. Thank you, home skillet. We love these thumbs ups. 150 now are here, 50 left to get, and we've got 200 yet again on the thumbs ups meter. Thank you all so very much for helping out. Are you guys getting these emails all the time that say that you won a super sweepstakes? Do you get those all the time? Uh, it's unbelievable the junk mail I get all the time. It's just ridiculous how this keeps coming in. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't know, just the weirdest, weirdest stuff going on out there. I, I don't know, who do you? Why it? Why they keep? Why? How? Where? When? It's unbelievable. And the, so silly. We're down twenty points on the Dow. Um, we got GameStop up nineteen cents. SoFi four eighty two and a half down eight. Volume on SoFi now is showing five point eight million with a low of four eighty two. We're at four eighty three and a half. Tesla one sixty two eighty three up two fifty. Apple up one eighty. Google up fifty seven. Moderna up one twenty. Cisco up seven. Pretty pretty well green over there. Some red uh, indicators. Uh, Pfizer down eleven. IBM down forty. Uh, Microsoft is off twenty four cents. Not too serious there. Uh, Spire by the way up two point one cents at sixty seven point nine. Amazon up a buck and a half. Home Depot up three twenty seven. Vanek down one ninety. Uh, Netflix up three seventy. Adobe down three fifty nine. Mixed bag, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What can I say? Uh, there you have it. Uh, JJ, uh, Gmail filters, Uncle Bruce. Yeah, I have a Hotmail account. That's probably why I'm getting hit like that. Boris, I'm I'm just getting emails where they ask me if I want to enlarge things. Hmm, that's odd. Uh, Lorraine, are they looking for people's information? Uh, generally, yes. Chase Rosita, number 150 on the thumbs up, Bruce. You are going to 200, no question about it. Thank you, everybody for hitting the thumbs up button. I love it. 483 to 484 on SoFi seems to be the market right now. I'm trying to get the 484. Okay, everybody. Welcome to the party, everybody. Nice to see you here. Uh, appreciate these thumbs ups already and uh, watching all kinds of uh, news pass by. Um, Never a dull moment uh, going on here. Uh, we're green on the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ, but we're negative on oil. $69.30 a barrel on oil. We were 83 a barrel three weeks ago. We have really taken a hit here on oil. Very interesting. Uh, picked up 60 so far at 485 Stealing paper from innocent victims. 
How can you live with yourself, White Feather, for doing such a thing? I mean, some poor schmuck just lost 60 cents, 60 shares that someday are going to be $100 a share, and you took it off them for $4.85. How can you do that? That's that's just uh, that's unbelievable. Uh, that's $6,000 in stock you got your hands on there for, what, $260 a share? How do you live with yourself? Like, it's, you're like becoming a Warren Buffett. Uh, buy cheap, hold for the long term, and get rich. Hmm. Well, welcome to the party, pal. Well done. Uh, way to go. Uh, I congratulate you. Uh, anyone who's selling down there can't help these people. I guess that's the deal right there. What can I say? Thank you all for your support and for scooping up some cheap deals. Why not? Um, well done. Interesting, interesting stuff today. Uh, oh, look who's coming through the door. Oh, man, oh, man. Jen, how are you doing today? Is it Santa? What's that? Is it Santa? Is it is, is Santa coming through the door? Oh my God! Is it Santa? It's not Santa. How are you doing today? I'm good. My voice is a little scratchy. Mm. Just getting used to Calgary flowers. Ah, uh, and <laughs> 30, 3,800 feet elevation. Well, uh, yeah. Drier air and so on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny that we came from a place called desert. But it's drier it's here. It's drier here than where we were. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, Palm Desert has more humidity than Calgary does because the air is much thinner up here um, yeah. than down there at 200 feet elevation versus 3,800. We've been here yeah. enough days that we should be back to the altitude. Yeah. Those first few days, so you're tired. You're tired. That's true. Uh, JR, good morning, Auntie Jen. Uh, White good Feather, morning, I have no conscience. It helps, Bruce. I have no <laughs> conscience. I bought that stock cheap. Richard Carlin, good morning, Auntie Jen. Uh, White Feather right, laughing out loud. Way to go, White Feather. Uh, nice job. People are stealing uh, a SoFi these days at 483 a share. Oh, we had 472 Sorry. yesterday afternoon. We're at 484 right now. The low of the day, 480. Uh, hang on, I got to refresh. The low of the session on SoFi, 482 or 483, 484. What's the volume today? Uh, down from yesterday, we're only at five odd million right now. We were at over ten million at this point yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Twelve minutes in, we were doing a million a minute. Remember, million shares a minute yesterday. We're at five million in twelve minutes, so we're not getting the volumes of uh, of uh, yesterday. That's a sign that the stock's drying out, and that's a good sign. It's actually, a sign. it's a good sign. The stock is drying out. Uh, not as much available at uh, at a pen. <laughs> Ghostbusters, yeah. It's right. Uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters. What do you want? Do Go, you want? Good morning, Auntie Jen from Mandu number five. Uh, morning, Dean, Andy. thanks, Alberto, Alex. Good morning, Jen good from morning, London Alex. and area. Nice to have you all here yeah. and uh, welcome to the party. Big day for us today. It is. Key day. Key day. Well, the Fed's oh. going to talk. No, no, no. <laughs> keys. Keys. We're getting oh. keys. <laughs> I said for us. I, yes. Big, yes. I've got a big day. Today. Take the measuring. Show day. Tape and. Yep. Take pictures of where outlets are. Oh my gosh, we got we got work to do. Work to do. Oh, by the way, heads up for everybody. I just thought of this. I forgot to mention this on Friday. Friday, 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 Friday. You don't Friday. get a Friday. I get. Uh, I won't I get be. Them. I won't be on the air Friday at all. I will not be here for the pre-market Friday. I won't be here for the show on Friday. Uh, it's moving day for us, Friday. Uh, and I just want you all to know how much this hurts him. <laughs> oh, it kills me. It kills me. I, I realized at one in the morning last night, I'm, I couldn't go to sleep last night. I'm thinking about the channel and you guys, and it, I, it hit me. I can't be on the air Friday. Yeah. I can't be physically on the and air this, on Friday. This doesn't mean he's going to sleep in. Yeah. He'll still be up. He'll still be reading all the market. He'll still be looking at everything. But then... We are on the road. I got to get a truck. I have to pick up a truck. I have to meet movers. We have to load it up. No, Monday. I just like Friday, referring uh, to them as the muscle. <laughs> yeah, we've hired the muscle. Uh, so no show on Friday. Friday. I'll have to remind myself to remind you. There's tomorrow. a show today, Wednesday. There's a show tomorrow. We're on tonight for Primetime Live. Mm -hmm. Cross my fingers. I'll be here on time. Uh, but I will not be on the air Friday. That is uh, that. He hit me last night. I just remember now to tell you. Yeah, because believe, you're on at six now. Uh, yeah, local time, six o'clock. Yeah, eight o'clock Eastern. <laughs> 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 
It's only an hour, uh, but it's uh, mind-bending. Uh, it's mind-numbing. <laughs> JR, indices are taking a run, but not so far. Ooh, uh, yeah. white, uh, white feather. Have a great day. See you all tomorrow. Bobby Atkinson grabbed another 10 at the bell last night, 490. JR, Uncle Bruce, lift with your knees, save your back. <laughs> EW, AJ, good morning. How about those Kraken? They won in overtime last night. I oh, know. my God. And the Florida boys beat the Leafs last night. Oh, my gosh. Those Florida boys. Oh, my, 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 It's my, so my, much my. fun when the, the, the supposed winners are, are out, and now everybody believes that it's a free-for-all. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the Kraken have never won a playoff series until the one they just had yeah, against yeah. Colorado. So they're first-timers here. Florida hasn't won a Stanley Cup before. They're going in. They're in the second round, leading the Leafs. Playing, my wow. gosh! Oh, um, now who's playing? Who the rain? Uh, the uh, Devils are playing the uh, Hurricanes, yeah, okay. and um, the other series is Edmonton is playing, Edmonton playing, uh, <laughs> playing uh, Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah, that's right, the Nuts. Vegas has yeah. never won a cup. Um, the Rangers no, have won a cup. Carolina's won a cup. So there are three teams that are in the tournament out of eight that have never won a Stanley Cup. The Knights' first season, they got, got they got went it. to the finals. Yeah, and uh, that was so got, close. Got lost in six. I That's think the first was. team. That's Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Chase Rosita, just make make a movie after the muscle leans into the work. Bobby <laughs> Atkinson, does the future son-in-law know he's moving you all this weekend? <laughs> yeah. See, that's why you have to have lots of daughters. Mm. When you when you need things moved, you have lots to call on. Yeah, lots of daughters who have young <laughs> young boyfriends that are eager to please the potential father-in-law. Well, we don't have that going on. Uh, no, no, that's not happening. We know what he does with her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we know what she does with him. Oh my goodness! Uh, we can call on him. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, we got a forty-two point gain on the Dow now. We're going higher, but again, I don't expect much until Powell speaks. Hours from now, 15 yeah. points on S&P, 70 points gained on NASDAQ. It's leading the market's higher 0.6 of a percentage point. The Dow's only up 0.10. What else are they going to talk about today? Like everybody knows what's going to happen to the price. <laughs> so what, what else are they going to talk about? Until it's done, it's done. You oh, know, okay. until it's done, nothing gets done. That's... It's going to be like the crack and they're just going to surprise everybody. <laughs> I guess. Oh, surprise. Uh, the market's going up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Go Devil, says Mandu, red-faced, hard Go shape. Devil. Options Nomads, number 154. I'm just tuning in. What did we miss? Thank you for these thumbs ups, everybody. 154 have come through here. 46 to go. We got 200 again. You guys are awesome. <clears throat> yeah, we'll not be on the air on Friday. I'm off Friday. <laughs> Tomorrow's my last day of the week. And you might uh, just be a sad rendition of yourself on Monday. <laughs> oh, Monday, I'm going to be hurting so bad. It's going to be so bad on Monday. It's, it's Yikes. so... Um, you know, people say, oh, you must be so excited you're moving into a place. You must be so – at this – you know, it's still panic at this point. Oh, yeah. Pure. After Friday, then it can turn to excitement. Then misery. <laughs> misery. The misery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, we've got yeah. uh, we've got so much work in front of us right now. Just, oh, yeah. But – Just imagine, like, our first grocery shopping. Oh, yeah. You, you have to buy salt and pepper. You, well, yeah, we got work to do. Uh, I don't have a table to put this computer on uh, for my show. No, not yet. Uh, I might be in the dining room, actually. Uh, I don't have a chair to sit on. No, we don't have chairs yet. I don't have a chair to sit on in the dining room. We only have, but we got a table. We got a table. I love uh, my table, so my table came. <laughs> now, we, we, have, we, are, we are behind the eight ball here. Uh, this weekend, hell on earth this weekend. Gotta hell on earth. Find you a chair, a table. Got to get me a chair. Got to get the right office chair. Finally, uh, it goes up and down. Yeah, and turns. It doesn't. We get squeak. You one of those desk treadmills, so you can you can be walking. A desk treadmill. How about that, Bruce? We could get you a treadmill. Because back in the day, you you didn't really sit at your desk. You were you were up and and swaying, and and you'd be walking around your office. And I was in my thirties. Here's the wind up, and here's the here's pitch. the pitch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Creston had a table and a chair. Yes. No, no, Creston didn't have a table and a chair. Well, in... Creston had a bar stool, yeah. a banker box, and a computer on it. You didn't see that. Oh, no, there was no chair. There's no table. But, and the chair in Creston yeah. was a dining yeah. chair with a pillow on it. But we, yeah, we yeah, had yeah. our friend who was a handy-tiny guy. Yeah. And he did make 
Like if he talked, modified a bar stool. For your stool. He modified a bar stool for me. No, no, no. He put a top on it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Was it adjustable? No. Depending no, how no. many biker boxes you put on it, maybe it was adjustable. Uh yeah, yeah, no, it was pretty rudimentary over there because again, we knew we were leaving. We were leaving and we were gonna be on the road. And what am I gonna buy all this stuff for? To put in storage? Well, we're gonna let it get yeah. dusty now? That's stupid. That's good. I'm, so, I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to the the after part where now we have time to go through the boxes and see what's there. God. It what feels like so long ago. Didn't we, we throw out and why didn't we throw oh, out? Oh, we threw out so much. We're going to go through that. We're going to have well, boxes wow. of crap that we are going to throw out all next week. There will be boxes. <laughs> we should throw this out. Let's throw it out now. Okay, we'll throw it out now. After moving it and storing it and moving it again and now throwing it out. Oh, we're going to have fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah kids. Um, Richard, I don't need to hear Uncle Bruce breathing hard. I can barely take the bagel chomping uh, BW. So Jen gets a new hip. She just And she just called you fat and said, go get a treadmill, tubby. <laughs> You got well, it. Hanging and leveling all the photos. Good <laughs> luck, Uncle Bruce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's it's hell week. Oh. Hell week for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. It's gonna be crazy. It's just gonna be kooky, not so silly. Uh, yeah. No, all the fun we leave times. The hanging of pictures to our daughter. She's a little obsessive. Yeah, we'll leave it. To Every her. picture will be straight. She'll she'll do it. Four eighty <laughs> four eighty a share on the sofa right now. Low of the day. Unbelievable work coming up. It's not so good. Cool. Well. Yeah. Speaking of work, I gotta go make a uh, cup of tea. All righty. Have a cup of. And, well, and thank you, some, thank you, Auntie some, Jen. Uh, Dean, sitting. I thought you were standing four foot eight feet in height there. Uh, Jr. The lamp. <laughs> what lamp? Chase. I want one of those wooden cell phone amplifiers. Coming out of storage. Oh, yeah. oh, on Friday. Coming true. out of storage. We, we, we oh, have God, those. We, we have the wooden cell phone amplifiers. Oh, God. We'll show those off again. And, and I tell you, uh, we, we have thoughts on not the lamp. <laughs> uh, not the lamp. We have thoughts on that. We're, we we're not going anywhere on that. Oh, my goodness. All All right. Everybody have a good Wednesday. Oh, all right. Go run, man. There's the hand. There's the hand. There it is. Oh, the you're, hand. You're further away. Ooh, yeah. You're... For a reason. I don't want to get hit. hit. There you go. There I you go. You I thought you just wanted to lean back to get a fuller view of me. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to trick you onto going on the camera. And then do I get it? Oh, will I get it? You let me do that. See, I think, Jen, you let me do that. You don't let me do that. Oh, man. Uh, BW, so kind of thankful that you're off bagels. So the, uh, the thanks, uh, the THX surround sound was difficult. But whatever happened to your caffeine-free Diet Coke that you sucked down like a friend, it's right here. I got my caffeine-free Diet Coke right there. Giddy up. Mmm. Try to drink it quietly if possible. Financial Mr. Boom, another 100 SoFi, 479. Oh, thank you very much. Buying up the SoFi at 479. Well, 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 well. How about that action? Good old SoFi, 478 right now. That's a low of the day. Buying up cheap SoFi as they, uh, the idiots give it away. The ISM Services Index rises to 51.9 in April from 51.2 uh, in a prior month. I guess that's what that means. Uh, I guess SEC set to arm investors with daily stock buyback data. I don't know what that means. Uh, interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, Chase Rosita Parker better put a ring on it, Uncle Bruce. Tiff, uh, will the markets go back up when Uncle Bruce eats his first bagel in ages next Monday? Oh, my, my. I don't know. Deuce Caboose, uh, just do a reverse split already. Extend student loan pause and send do six feet under. I'm ready. <laughs> Hang in there, Deuce. Hang in there. Oh my gosh! Uh, we'll see what happens. We're now we're up forty-seven points on the Dow, it's fifteen on S and P, sixty-three on Nasdaq. Nasdaq is up a half a percentage point. The Dow's only up 0.14. Oil down two fifty-seven to sixty-nine oh nine. Going for sixty-eight bucks on the print. Going for a sixty-eight dollar print on oil. I was talking seventy-four yesterday, seventy-three, seventy-two, seventy-one. Now 68, like, oh, oil is really plummeting here. Big time. Amazing. 
up 25 on the Dow. A little pullback going on. AI is up nine. Oh no, down nine. AI down nine. Unity down 44. GameStop is up 18 cents at 18.76 a share. Volume on GameStop 393,000 shares. SoFi 4.79 a share. Uh, down 11 and a half cents on a volume of 10.4 million. We're open now 35 minutes, and we've only done 10 million so far. That's 20 million less than yesterday, right around here, or 18 million less. Uh, that's a lot less trading going on on so far. Telling me the turnaround is coming at any time. At any time, she'll turn to go the up. She'll go up. It's going to happen. We're running out of paper down here. The sellers don't want to sell down here. They're going, eh, it's a little low. I don't think it's going to go much lower than this. Maybe I want to buy this stuff. Watch out, uh, shorters. A uh, Tesla up 299, 163.30. Apple up 208 to 170.62. Earnings tomorrow from Apple. Google up 70 cents. Moderna up 25. Cisco up three. Pfizer down 19, IBM down 26. We have ATIP up 1.1 cents, Sixter down 0.7. Bed Bath Beyond is not trading anymore. It is now suspended and now will not trade any longer. So there's the end of that one. I can move that quote uh, way down the list. The only way Bed Bath and Beyond can trade is if um, it gets pink sheeted. And I don't even know if that's possible. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, there we go there. All righty. Let's move on here. What else are we at now? There we go. We got GameStop up 19. SoFi down 14. 476, 477. Uh, Tesla 163.04 up 273. Apple up 193, 170.47. Google up 57. Moderna up 14. Cisco up 3. Pfizer down 18. IBM down 29. ATIP up 1.1. 60.7 lower. HBQ up 20. Microsoft down 24. 23 and me up three and a half cents. Matterport down two and a half. Rocket Lab up five cents. Smart Rent down a half a penny. Spire up 1.1 cents on a volume of 7,400 shares. They came out with an announcement today that they've done another uh, contract, but uh, nothing on the stock. Absolutely unbelievable. Amazon up 169. Home Depot up four dollars a share. Uh, Vanek down one forty seven. Netflix up uh, up three forty eight. Adobe down three twenty. Goldman up four cents. Boeing down one up one ninety one. I got red, red, green, red, green, red, green. Meta down eighteen. Um, we've got RCL Royal Caribbean up fifty eight. Uh, we've got um, Target up one seventy six. JP Morgan down forty five cents. Costco up 246, Walmart up 44, Disney up 85, and Nvidia down 387, American Airlines up three cents to 1380 right there. That is the story on uh, a bunch of these stocks. Dow is now showing a gain of 62 points as we jump around. Uh, plus minus, plus minus here. Um, waiting for the interest rate decision that'll come out in a few hours. That is the story, folks. And that's all I know. All right, um, my generic stock is up 10%, 10 bucks a share. Doing the happy dance might try the file dancing now. Deuce Caboose, leading cause of death in the U.S., so far. Richard Garland, my 477, just hit. I got him. 477, I bought him up. And we're now trading 11.5 million. Low today, 475. Yesterday's low, 472. Keep an eye on that. See how many stink bids are up down, are sitting around down here for those shares. That's it. Oil is down under 70 bucks a barrel for the first time since March. It's trading at $69 a barrel on the nose right now. 69 bucks a barrel at Texas, down to 66 a barrel today as we speak. And uh, it could go even lower. Oil, how much would you like? It's everywhere. 479.5, 479.5, 479.5. On SoFi, uh, trying to get back to 480 a share on SoFi. Low today, 475. Apparently, pardon me. Uh, yep, the low today, 475. Now trading at 480 a share. And oil, 6901, hanging on by a thread to 69 dollars a barrel uh, before it dips under 69 bucks. Cheers, everybody. 
from Calgary, Alberta. Um, Rugman is out and about. We'll see how the markets react as the day goes on. Oh, yeah. A little bit of caffeine-free Diet Coke. You know, down in the States, I'm buying this stuff, caffeine-free Diet Coke, two-liter bottles. They're running me 286 American, uh, which is like 360 Canadian. Yesterday, two bucks a barrel, uh, two bucks, two bucks a bottle of Canadian. I'm buying diet caffeine free Coke, two bucks a, for a two liter bottle. That's a dollar forty US versus two eighty US. Half price, crazy, isn't that something? Uh, Charlie Carver, Charlie, uh, how screwed up? SoFi is lower than uh, what was that? What was that stock you said? <laughs> I have a great memory, but it's incredibly short. Um, there we go. Uh, it's it's lower than somebody else. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable is right. There we go. Uh, oh, yeah. Here we go. Here's the message. Thank you. Uh, yeah, SoFi is lower than AMC, right? SoFi is trading at a lower price than AMC shares. And AMC is a company that is in big financial trouble, $5 billion in debt, SoFi has two and a half billion in cash with ten billion in deposits, and they're growing at forty percent a year. But there are, uh, I guess, on AMC, there's well, I, I guess there's just as many shares. I, I'm not sure on that st story. Let me double check something. Let me take a little peek here. Just you got my curiosity going now. AMC at five sixty two. Uh, yeah, AMC is worth market cap on the common shares four point four billion dollars for AMC. Four point four billion market cap. SoFi market cap right now, $4.5 billion. So AMC is worth more money on a market cap than SoFi is. And SoFi is four eighty dollars a share. There you go. Um, I would recommend that all shareholders of AMC sell their shares and buy SoFi instead. Uh, I think that would be a good switch. Um, you'd go from a company that's heavy in debt to heavy in cash. I, I think that's... Yeah, I think there's the move. Uh, Wing Commander, I did some rollovers. AI, July 25s into October, 17 and a halves for a $3 credit. Unity, May 30s into August 25s for a three seventy dollars credit. Now looking to roll down August 30s into 25s for a $2 credit. Nice move across the board. Absolutely build it up. You can buy more deep and money calls on whatever else you want to buy and keep building the diversification and growing income. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, buying Coke by the barrel. This is the way. I, if I could, I would. But they don't sell it by the barrel. Unbelievable. Yep, 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 yep. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, $68.92. Speaking of a barrel of oil, $68.92. We're under 69 now. Down 277 and falling on oil. Amazing. How are you guys doing on your options trades? Let me know how you're doing out there. Hope you're making all kinds of money. 1871 on GameStop. Uh, obviously, those of you who've written 15 to $25 calls have had a drop off on the call values. Uh, some of you have made some incredible profits lately. Congratulations. So far, 480 a share now down a dime. Tesla 16301 up 270. Apple up 160 a share right now. Touchgrass. I know a guy. I know a guy. Deuce Caboose, a big fan of little cans of Diet Coke. The large two liters can give you the scoots, says Deuce Caboose. <laughs> I don't find that problem. Uh, but hey, to each his own. I don't know. Um, interesting, <laughs> interesting markets here, to say the least. As we're waiting for um, the interest rate policy to be announced, interest rate numbers, uh, we're expecting a quarter of 1% rise in the Fed funds rate uh, later today. I know a guy. Uh, let's see, where are we at here? Google up 59, Moderna down 21 cents. I know a guy on the Moderna front who's, I think, doing okay on his Moderna contracts. I'm sure he's doing just fine. Cisco up two cents, Pfizer down 20. I know a couple of folks on the Pfizer front uh, that I think are doing okay on their contracts. I'm pretty sure they are. Um, IBM is down 31 cents. Uh, I know some folks in the IBM camp that have been doing quite all right on their IBM contracts. Um, you buy the IBM stock right now, you will get a yield of 5.27% on your money from the dividend alone 
on IBM. Not bad, not a bad return just holding the dividend, but if you make up 1% a month writing options, you just pull that to 17% a year. Not bad, not bad at all. Check your statements. Are you making that kind of money on your IRAs, your your 401ks, uh, your investments out there? Are you getting 17, 18, 20% a year? Might be time to look into writing calls on IBM. Uh, take some classes and figure out how to do it. Absolutely. Uh, you want those uh, classes, the five for four deal, uh, the address for the PayPal account, right there it is. Make a donation for five ninety nine ninety nine US funds right there, and I will get you the five classes you would like. Send me a private email. Say, Bruce, here are the five classes I'd like to have, and I'll send them to you after the show. All righty, there you go. Interesting. Uh, Uncle Bruce, I mentioned it earlier, Financial Mischief is here, but I wanted you to see it as well. Those GameStop $10 strike calls I wrote, I bought them back yesterday, and I locked in 47000 in profit. That one buyback just covered 50% of my leaps cost right there. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Zeta State, Uncle Bruce, as you may have, as you may know, I have GameStop 20s that expire July 16 and originally it sold for $2 each. Should I buy them back before the interest rate decision? What should I do on those? Um, what did you get for them and what are they trading for now? What, what, what's the deal on those? Uh, GameStop now is sitting at uh, 1865 holding a seven cent gain at the moment. Aaron Millen, 400 more so far for 485,000 shares, now with an average of 1325. Well done, keep the average coming down. JR, don't, uh, didn't Biden get slammed for not buying up oil in the recent past? Hmm, and now it's down to 68.92. The American public is benefiting as well because if you're buying stock oil for the National Strategic Reserve, you're paying below 70 bucks a barrel for this. Uh, very good. Aaron, lowered my average to nearly by nearly $2 in two days on this SoFi stock. Well done, Aaron. Well done indeed. That is the advantage of scooping this stuff up. Absolutely smart move. Picking up the SoFi down here while they have it. Why not? 482 uh, after touching 475 today, I think. That's, I think, the story. Uh, next soda purchase is on me. Uh, hey, thank you, whoever that was. Uh, someone just sent me a PayPal donation for a soda deposit, a soda fund. I thank you for building the soda fund for me. Uh, much appreciated. Um, I could always use a soda fund buildup. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> who was that? Alberto. Thank you, Alberto. I appreciate that, my friend. Uh, uh, always, always comes in handy. The soda, the soda buildup, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, those of you out there making donations to my cause. We're down 45 cents on Unity, but we're up five on AI. The Dow's only up four points. GameStop up 14 cents. SoFi down nine at 481 to 482 a share. Uh, Aaron, uh, thanks, Bruce. I've missed uh, being here. You keep us all calm during these nasty storms the last two years. We do what we can, my friend. Because there is always a tomorrow, and uh, we overreact. We get stocks overreacting from time to time. It's nuts. Uh, so I only down nine cents actually. Tesla up three seventy three at one sixty four oh four. Apple up one seventy. Google up sixty two. Moderna one thirty one ten. Cisco down a penny. Pfizer down twenty eight. IBM down twenty eight. There you go. We'll keep an eye on this uh, market as we wait the interest rate thing. Now, I won't be on the air with the interest rate decision coming out. You guys will be watching that on your own. Uh, that'll be coming up later today. Thank you all for thumbs ups. We have 161 in the house. Fantastic to see 161 thumbs ups already in here. Now 162, 38 left to get, and we've got 200. Thank you for those of you watching on the rerun. Appreciate you hitting the thumbs up button as well. That adds uh, much more momentum to this channel. I thank you very, very much for that. It all helps. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Apparently, PacWest and other regional bank stocks are bouncing back today. Uh, I was expecting this. Uh, I was expecting this oversold situation to filter in to more and more of the bank stocks. Uh, the next one to pop up, SoFi. Do not be surprised when SoFi takes a shot higher quickly. Do not be surprised. All right. There it is. 
What can I say? 480, 481 a share? No, it hasn't happened yet, but it will. It will. Uh, volume on SoFi this morning is showing uh, 13.6 million in uh, 49 minutes. Um, yesterday around now, we were at about 40 million volume. Today, 13 million. The selling is drying up, and we've bounced up from 475 so far to 481 at any time. There will be a run on this stock at, at any moment. Just, 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 just watch. Don't believe me. Watch for yourself. This is way oversold. Way, way oversold. Uh, anyway, there you go. Um, did you get my? Uh, did you get grape jelly? Now that you're back in Canada, uh, not yet. I haven't gone grocery shopping yet. We're at our friend's house at the moment, and uh, he does have cheese whiz though. So I've been chomping on some cheese whiz. But, uh, no, we haven't done our own grocery shopping. Uh, we have to wait to get into the apartment this weekend. Yeah, I'll be, oh, God, are we going to be working this weekend, Jen and I? There will be no break for us. Lordy, Lord, it's going to be nuts. Uh, my, my, I'm going to be able to sleep on my old bed. I'm looking forward to this. Believe me, I have missed my bed. But, oh, my, are we going to be up to our neck in stuff? Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, I said soda instead of Coke intentionally. Uh, it's all good. Uh, wh whatever whatever you call it, my friend. I just say thank you for the donation. Uh, whatever you want to call that stuff is okay with me. <laughs> uh, 479 to 480 on SoFi right now. When will the breakout happen? At any time. I do not know. Cannot say. But when it happens... Watch out. Uh, we're going to get a run. It's going to happen. There's going to be a run. I don't know how far. I don't know how fast. I don't know how long. But uh, get ready, kids. If you haven't picked up so far, it's your fault. It's not my fault. Uh, Beach Boy, um, Pole Dancers Soda Fund. How about that? Uh, thank you, my friend. Uh, 30 shekels, 10 US dollars, at least 10 US dollars from there. Thank you, man. I do appreciate it. That buys a bit of cola around here. Two bucks a bottle Canadian. It's a dollar forty American for a bottle, a two-liter bottle of Diet Coke, a regular Coke, classic. You get any of the ones you want. Any Coke product at the one store right now, two bucks a two-liter bottle. Cans were a fortune note. Twelve pack of cans were $7.99. It's just not, it's just ridiculously priced. Got to buy the two-liter bottles. Um, thank you, Beach Boy, my friend. Uh, you're awful kind. Uh, Zeta State, my game stuff, July 20s. I sold for $2. I can buy back for $180. Shall I buy back now or wait until after the Fed announcement? Well, I don't know if the, if GameStop's going to have a big run because the Fed is going to announce a change in interest rates. I, I really don't think uh, GameStop is going to lead the market higher. Is it possible that GameStop could go up 50 cents? Yeah, I guess. But what is the likelihood of the July 20s? What's their future? Uh, your stock's 1882 a share. They're out of the money. This is May 3rd. Uh, every day that goes by is another day of time being taken away. Um, we see a, a, a price at 1750, 18 bucks a share next week. These contracts are 80 cents. Um, You'll make 50% per return. Now, if you can, on the other hand, with the stock up 24 cents right now, if you could write August or September or October calls that are 20s and get more money, you might make that move. Instead, take the extra cash. And if that's enough cash to buy another deep in the money call to add to your Ability to write another one, you might want to look at that strategy. Um, again, I can't, I, I can't fault you if you're thinking of doing doing anything like that. Um, totally your call, though. Uh, 1883 is, uh, you know, not what I call uh, the low, and certainly not the high. Uh, here we are. You know, we're in this range right now. These contracts are slipping bit by bit by bit. Um, I would rather you write. Three and four dollar contracts rather than two dollar contracts. I'd rather you get much higher bang for your buck than that. I'm going to take a look at October calls just out of curiosity. The 20s are 285 to 325. It's better. Um, November 
GameStop calls. Is there anything there? Uh, 305 to 330 for the 20s. Uh, December 2023's, uh, the 20s would be 330 to 365. And going out to January 2024, going that far out, 20s are 345 to 390. So uh, there's some some dollars there. Um, totally up to you. If you wrote 1875s for 2024, January's, you'd get 385 to 435 for those. Uh, 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 definitely more money. Uh, not quite double, but more money. Uh, well, if you got three, if you got 430 for them, you 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 definitely have a, more than double your money than you got now. Could that allow you to buy a bunch of deep in the money calls and add more of these calls? But uh, you're going to need a dip to make money. Not uh, you know, time will will it'll be quite a bit of time from January back, right? Uh, let's take a look back into October again. October 18s are 3.55 to 3.95. They're in the money right now, 83 cents. Uh, but if it uh, if the shares go to 17.50 in the next week or two, uh, these 18s are out of the money and they will likely drop to this. Uh, Oh, three dollar range, uh, two eighty five range. Uh, that's possible. So that's something to consider for October. Uh, again, uh, up to you, my friend, uh, how you want to do this. Uh, you're you've written July twenties uh, at the moment, and those are sitting at one eighty one to one ninety five. The nineteens are two sixteen to two forty one. The eighteens for July, two fifty three to two eighty seven. Uh, that's where we're at. The eighteens are only worth eighty three cents. So they have just as much premium as the 20s do at the moment. The 21s are down to 150. The 22s are down to 130. The 23s are at 110. So you know where the future lies for your two 20s. You do nothing. They're going to drop by about half, hopefully, in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, and then you buy them back if you wish. Um, you can play this any way you want. There's, there's a million ways to play it. But I would prefer... You be writing 350 contracts rather than two dollar contracts, but that's just me. Uh, as I go, all right, Alberto Beach Boy Level. I'll take a look at my GNRC. My average is 98 dollars. BW ahead instead of sending postcards this month, can we sign up to have you send us Canadian cheese whiz? I uh, want to see what all the fuss is about. Cindy B, I guess Tesla doesn't care about the price of oil. Uh, a home skill of my risk tolerance must be lower than those most here. I can't bring myself to hold cover calls on GameStop through earnings. Do I need to just get over it? We won't have earnings until uh, sometime in June. We won't even hear the earnings until June sometime. So it's going to be a while yet. Uh, we've got the Dow up 36 points. Um, S&P up 10. NASDAQ up 50. Oil, 68.85 on oil. Wow. Um, Tesla shares up 406. They don't care about the oil price today. No, not at all. Apple up 173. SoFi 479, 480 right now. GameStop at 1876, up 18 cents. Yeah. Vilva, so the other day I was eating cheese whiz with my pals, and, uh, you know, <laughs> funny thing happened on the way to work. Uh, Google up 39, Moderna down 37, Cisco up 3, Pfizer down 23. IBM just eight cents lower now, coming back. There you go, kids. It's a mixed bag market. Nothing much going on. Uh, really, we're just, you know, you guys are going to be waiting for the Fed results and then wait for you know who to have a press conference and watch the volatility over there. That's what's going to happen, I think. Uh, so wait and watch for that, everybody. That's the story. Thank you very much for these 164 thumbs ups today 164 36 away from 200 uh thank you all so much for helping out with uh, the thumbs ups appreciate it uh hopefully we'll hit 200 on the rerun uh the, from the rerunners as we come up to the two hour window here for the end of this morning's show remember i will not be on the air at all on friday i'm on the air tomorrow but i'm off friday it's moving day and it's a absolute logistical nightmare for me. Um, so I will not be on the air Friday. Uh, TJ says to BW, Canadian cheese whiz is basically the same stuff that is in those cheese and crackers snack packs they sell in the U.S. I used to put them on my daughter's lunch for school. Do scaboose. Uncle Bruce, I could dump Matterport and ME and add another 5,000 shares of SoFi. What are your thoughts on that? Matterport 
and ME. Um, both of them are going to be releasing results not too long from now. Um, I don't have, I think, the exact dates. I think I got Matterport for May the 9th. That's in six days. Um, and uh, I'm not sure about the exact date for ME, but I'm guessing in the neighborhood. You may want to wait for the earnings first uh, and then see what good gives. Uh, Vilbus, I hope Uncle Bruce has uh, watched some uh, Letter Kenny. Uh, Beach Boy, Alberto, uh, am I mistaken, but seems premiums on GameStop are not as good percentage-wise to Tesla and going south. Uncle Bruce, any thoughts? Well, if you multiply the price of GameStop to equal the price of Tesla, you're talking, what, 9 to 1? ratio maybe um eight and a half to one then you got to multiply the option contract value pi times eight eight and a half to see and make a comparison so you know uh tesla 165 versus a gamestop 19 is what you're going to do uh look at the premiums on both of those going forward and multiply one by, by multiply the gamestop by eight and a half i guess 1875 compared to 163 what is the ratio it would be handy if tesla was trading at uh, 187 right now it would be a 10 to 1 ratio it would be handy to figure it out bobby to be fair uh fair enough to be fair yes uh alberto beach but you are correct i shift monthly on writing cover calls i i shift monthly it's up to you folks which ones you want to write calls on i understand uh wing commander uh, still sitting on June 20s and July 24s on GameStop. September 18s, 325 to 370. 19s of 386 to 325. The 20s are 253, 280. Is it too aggressive writing 18s, Uncle Bruce? Uh, no, it's not too aggressive because you'll be paid the book value plus a premium. As long as a premium is a good premium, you're fine. Um, you can always do a roll-up if necessary. You know that. So, no, it's not too aggressive. I, I would... Grab the cash and pick up more deep in the money calls and write more calls. Uh, that's the way I'd be doing it. But up to you uh, how you're, you know, what you're going to buy and when and where. If you're going to buy deep in the money calls into something else and write those, uh, fair enough. Use GameStop to diversify your account. Great move. Nothing wrong with this. BW, I just submitted uh, docs to have a chunk of my former employer's 401k money sent my way to self manage and load the boat on poor man cover calls should have it should have it all done within the next few weeks life will change very soon oh indeed it will indeed beach boy um vilbus so i was looking for grape jelly at the store the other day vilbus how are you now how are you now uh richard carlin me me and me uh that is the emotion being shown there as folks continue to watch this market uh, thank you everybody for being part of my show today 169 thumbs ups have come through here we only need 31 more it is time for a knee emoji attack uh to get this market moving direction you want it to move neat 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 i say uh welcome to the party pals Mirko is here neat 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 is hitting the knee emojis too there's no getting away from the knee emoji attack that will take over this channel jr knee, 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 knee. here they come they're coming in from California. They're coming in from all over the place. So welcome all to the party as we enjoy the day. 282 to 283 on SoFi. Is the breakout underway right now? I don't know. Tiff, neat, neat, neat. John Anderson, neat, 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 neat. They're coming in one after the other. 483 on SoFi. Here we go. Is the run happening? Is this it? Maybe the big E is here. Neat, 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 neat. Zip. There you go. 483 on SoFi. My, my, my. What can it do, Boris? Still no Fed announcement. Not yet. Not yet. I think it's around noon Eastern. Is it? What time does that come out? Is that around noon Eastern? Zeta State. Bagel time and neat emojis are everywhere from Zeta State. Giddy up, all you kids. Uh, making money in the stock market. Oh, my gosh. They're just handing it to you. GameStop, 1882, up 24 cents. You might be able to write some calls today. I don't know. Dow's down 5.6, now down 10. There you go. EIA reports the U.S. distillate stockpiles down 1.2 million barrels. Gasoline supplies up 1.7 million barrels. 
Crude inventory is down 1.3 billion. That's a nothing burger. 68.96. Not going to help oil at all. Mr. Premium, the option. Karen is here with the knee emojis. Uh, there you go. Zeta State thumbs ups for Bruce. Thank you so much, everybody, for these thumbs ups. Keep those coming in and hit the knee emoji. The stock will do what you want it to do. We hope with the knee, the Knights of Knee behind you. Oh my goodness. 1880 up 22 on GameStop. So far, 282 to 283. Tesla 164.31 up 408. Apple up 159. Google up 46. Moderna down 37 cents. Folks, thank you so much for being part of the show today. 173 thumbs ups and still coming in. 27 to go to get to 200. Hit the thumbs up button if you can. Uh, appreciate it. I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Boris is saying, ah, the uh, the announcement on interest rates comes out at 2 p.m. Eastern. I get it. Okay, it's still a ways away. Folks, join me tomorrow morning uh, for the final show of the week. Uh, first thing in the morning, the uh, the uh, the alert and uh, the regular show. Tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern, I should be on the air at 8 o'clock Eastern for the uh, trade alert show. Uh, if all works out. So uh, tonight, sorry, tonight, prime time. Let me get this straight. Prime time with Uncle Bruce, 8 o'clock tonight for Gold Bagel members. Come on in as a Gold Bagel member. Join me at 8 o'clock tonight. We'll talk about the interest rate thing and how everything went today. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and 8.30 in the morning Eastern time. Uh, if you're a Gold Bagel member, we're out at 8. And if, for everybody else, 8.30 a.m. Thank you all so much for joining me today and being part of the show today i uh, appreciate it thank you for the thumbs ups and uh, all the kind words also those of you making donations today through super chat and paypal thank you under 74 thumbs ups and counting let's keep it going make money out there people keep following this market 484 on sofi is there a breakout coming on sofi it is entirely possible that that could happen at any time. Do not be surprised if this sucker takes off. Now 485, it's getting better. Um, keep an eye on your SoFi. Okay, guys, I will see you later tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern for the primetime live show for Gold Bagel members. Otherwise, I'll see all the rest of you tomorrow. 486 on SoFi going up again. Don't mess with the SoFi, kids. We're going higher. Congratulations, all of you who stole SoFi from unsuspecting victims who got sucked into the selling vortex. You took stock away from innocent people this morning. Beautifully done. Boris, have a great day ahead, everybody. Thank you so much. Everyone who's been here today, have a good one, and we'll catch you later tonight and tomorrow. Goodbye for now.